Hello, welcome to Wish Physics Lesson 4.2, Incline Planes. Alright, so this is going to be an abbreviated, uh, extra abbreviated version because one of the problems on here is super, super long. And I pre-worked it out so that we can kind of go through it step by step and the video doesn't take like 20 minutes for me to do. Um, that being said, if you do have any questions, feel free to stop by. I'll be happy to go through it in more detail or, you know, shoot me an email or whatever. Um, Alright, so... Picture this. Normally, we have an object like this, and like this, and like that. There we go. And that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, yeah, anyways. So, normally we have things on an x and a y axis. Let's try that. All right? And that works great when everything's nice and flat. But like right here, all on an angle. So that doesn't really change our x and our y. It just puts it on an angle. Right? So gravity still pulls things down because gravity and it likes to pull things down. That's what it does. It's nice and mean. It makes things fall. Um, it also keeps everything alive. So, you know, works out that way. So it's still pulling straight down. But because there's an angle right here, call that theta there, there is two components that make this up. There's what we call the parallel component, and then there's the perpendicular component. Right? So as we go across, that's parallel. And let me erase this. That's really bad. Uh, let me make these a little bit straighter. I'll use the straight line tool. Hmm, imagine that. Right? So there's our parallel component, and there's our perpendicular component. Now, our perpendicular component, that's actually going to be what results from our normal force. The parallel component, that's the force of gravity that's pulling things down. And that'll be down a ramp. Right? Things going this way. And if you take a close enough look at it, Here's gravity going straight down. Here's the x component. And then there's the y component. Right? So trig-wise, you can do some math and find out that uh, angle there is the same as that angle there, but let's not worry about it too much. Um, let's just worry about this here. Dun, dun, dun. Where the force of gravity parallel, so here's your ramp, this part right here, that is equal to the sine of whatever the force of gravity is, right? So the sine of theta times whatever the force of gravity is. So if your um, uh, object is 10 kilograms, so the force of gravity is uh, 98 uh, going down, and then whatever multiplied by the sine of whatever angle that is. The part that is perpendicular to the ramp here that is our normal force. Right? That's how much the ramp is pushing up on us in order to make it so that this object doesn't fall through the ramp. So as long as we remember these two formulas, we should be pretty much set with figuring stuff out. But we also have to apply some of the information that we had from the last section. So let's take a look at this problem. This is the one that I told you previously that I worked out for you. That's why there's a bunch of writing already on it. Uh, and it's just to make things go a little bit quicker. So we have this 30 kilogram box. Here it is right here. Um, it's actually sliding up a ramp with 6.5 meters per second. Notice that the velocity is not attached to this because it's not part of the free body diagram. Um, and it gives us these coefficients. It also tells us that this angle right here is 25 degrees. All right, so before we even get started on the problem, we know that this is sliding up. We also know that nothing is pushing it up. It's just kind of going by its own momentum, right? So as it goes up the ramp, friction and gravity is going to make it slow down. So we have friction, we have gravity. Now, what makes those two up depends on uh, our angle and our force of gravity. So the first thing I went about doing was figuring out what our force of gravity, or how much we are going to be pulling down at all times. So that's our mass times our acceleration of gravity 
times the sine of 25. So this green arrow right here is negative 106.38. The next thing I went about doing was figuring out our force of friction. So our force of friction is going to be multiplied by our coefficient times the normal force. Now in the previous problem, we did the static friction first. But it's already moving. It's moving at 6.5 meters per second. So we don't need to know whether or not it's going to move because we know it's moving. Um, so we're just going to look at kinetic friction for this part. So that's going to be 0.4 times the normal force. But the normal force simply isn't 30 times 9.8. No, we have to take that 30 times 9.8 and multiply it by the cosine of 25. So that gives us 266.45. And then we're going to take, the, multiply that by the coefficient of friction, which is, two, which is 0.4. And that gives us our 106.58. Now, friction always opposes the motion. So if you take a look over here, our motion is going up. So friction goes down. So we have the force of gravity and we have friction. So there's friction and there's gravity. And that's all working together to slow this box down. And that equals negative 124.25. So that is our net force. That's how much force we have to slow it down. And no, that is not the answer at all. <laughs> Screw that up. Um, these two equal that. There you go. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is our net force right here. That equals our mass, which is 30 kilograms, times our acceleration. So if we divide this mass by our acceleration, we get, or by our, we divide our force by our mass, we get negative 7.69 meters per second squared. So that is how much our velocity is changing by. But this isn't asking for our acceleration. It's not asking for our velocity either. It's asking for how far up the ramp we end up going. So we need to know our displacement. So I'm going to point you in this direction, which is our one of our displacement formulas. We know our acceleration. We know that we're going to stop. And we know what our initial velocity is. So we find that our displacement is around 2.75 meters. So that's how far up the ramp it goes. So now it wants to know whether or not we're going to slide back down. Uh, if so, how long will it take to slide back down? If not, how much force will we need to push it in order to get it to slide down um, in 1.5 seconds? All right, so first we're going to take that normal force that we found from before. It's 266.45 and multiply it by our coefficient of static friction. All right? So coefficient of static friction is 133.25. So it's not going to move on its own, which means we need to give it a little push. Right? So this brings us to our delta half, 1AT squared plus VIT. Initial velocity is zero, so we don't even need this part of the formula. Sweet, because it's at rest. Um, we're going to figure out our net acceleration. I call it net because it's the overall acceleration. Yes, I know technically it's the only acceleration, but it's just a force of habit. This is how I like to think about it. Don't give me a hard time. Okay. Anyways, our displacement is going to be negative 2.75 because it's going to go back down the ramp, and that gives us an acceleration of negative 2.4. Multiply that by our mass, and that gives us our net force. All right. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So. Previously, the force of friction was going down, right? We took that negative 106, and we took that x component over here, and we got the negative 230. But friction always resists motion. So if we're sliding down, then friction goes up. So now it is positive. So we're going to end up taking this 106.58, and adding it to our negative 124.25. Then, we're going to go ahead and add it to each side. And that gives us our force of Roy. I don't know why it looks 
second. Mm. There we go. Which is negative 55.6 newtons. So that's how much Roy has to push down in order to get to accelerate um, in that amount of time. All right. Um, still a pretty long video, even though I uh, took some time to write some stuff out. So, all right. Uh, have a good one. Good luck tomorrow. And if you have any questions, stop in. Hasta luego.